Hello my small fat adaptive family and welcome back to another chaffle video. You might have noticed a huge increase in chaffle videos on this channel and that is only because I absolutely love this fantastic snack. Now don't worry, I will calm down at some point, but right now the chaffle train, the chaffle bandwagon is at full speed and I am on it like I'm at Disneyland and there's no queues. But I'm here, not doing my usual four chaffles in one video. I'm here because Ginger, lovely, lovely Ginger from Keto in the UK has set a challenge for me. So not only do you get in this video, I hope, a fantastic chaffle, but you also get to see my face and I'm talking to you more one-on-one, -on -one, which I haven't been doing for a while. I've been holding on to this experiment for quite a while now because I'm not entirely sure it's going to work. I didn't want to do something like strawberry or chocolate because they're already being done quite a lot. So, you know, Ginger, who set this challenge, I'll link her video down below, she did chocolate chip ones. So I kind of don't really want to expand on that anymore right now because I don't really have anywhere to go. And, you know, my face is here. I want to do something a little bit more special while we've got this time together. So without further ado, we are answering the question, eggnog will it chaffle in terms of ingredients i'm going to start off with the most basic ingredients i can and try and expand so i can kind of replicate something a bit eggnoggy so my main ingredients are going to be one egg half a cup or 57 grams of pre-shredded mozzarella and because we want this super super sweet i'm having two tablespoons of sweetener granulated and i use erythritol now that is the base no matter what we do, those three ingredients won't change. Hopefully not too much. You know, a little bit more mozzarella here, who knows, we'll find out. But then comes the complicated bit. I want to replicate eggnog. Not in texture, because we're having chaffles, so we want a chaffle texture, but in terms of flavor. So when we think about the flavor of eggnog, we think about egg yolks, vanilla, cinnamon, nutmeg and rum it's weird i know but i have faith in myself that if i can pull off this recipe this will be a chaffle that will rock the chaffle and keto world now there are two considerations i have to take in with this recipe number one is i have quite a lot of ingredients compared to the standard chaffle so it will probably make three to four chaffles instead of one to two and number two i have quite a few liquid ingredients compared to a normal chaffle recipe so i think i'm going to need a keto flour to help with sort of just binding ingredients and making sure it isn't too moist and wet and then doesn't actually cook properly uh, for this i'm going to use coconut flour because coconut flour absorbs three times the liquid that other flours like almond flour do and that way i can then only use sort of small quantities of it so I'm not going too close to a waffle recipe because of how much flour I'm adding. I'm trying to stay as true to a chaffle recipe as possible. So here's the first attempt at chaffling or chaffifying eggnog. You will need one egg, one egg yolk, two tablespoons of sweetener, half a cup or 57 grams of mozzarella pre-shredded, splash of vanilla extract, quarter of a teaspoon of nutmeg, a dash of cinnamon, half a teaspoon of rum. I use uh, Kraken's Black Spice Rum. It has no carbs, no fat, no protein in it. We're gonna try with one teaspoon of coconut flour. So the very first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm going to turn on my waffle machine. Again, I've linked it down below. I got this one from Argos because in this country, Dash isn't available and you know the little diddly ones that are going around I didn't really want to pay the price of postage on it just to have the novelty of it besides which this one fantastic it does two waffles at once so I can do one recipe in one waffle take the first thing I'm gonna do straight out of the bat is get a little bit technical because I'd love to pull this recipe off first time i know it's unlikely but we're going to strive for greatness so i'm going to take my egg and i'm going to separate it you can really do this however you want uh my girlfriend tends to do it by actually just 
putting it in a hand like this and I will actually say this is a fantastic way to do it because you don't get any rubbish with it but make sure you wash your hands before and after you do this. You don't need to worry too much about getting white, a little bit of white in your yolk because you will be using the white in this recipe. So it's not too much of a worry. This is just down to structural integrity. This is why we're doing this. I'm putting the white to the side and I'm going to get my other egg yolk and I'm gonna mix them in the same bowl. It doesn't have to be a big bowl for this. You just wanna give them a good mix until they're nice and yellowy. So the reason I'm doing this, separating the yolk from the white, is because I'm aiming for a fluffy, fluffier chaffel. So this kind of just, as I said, improves structural integrity. So doing this first and then adding the whites later will really help with just trying to bind this thing as best as possible. So now that I've mixed up my, my yolk, I'm going to add in sweetener. Now using a little bowl, you've got just about enough space to do this, but you're gonna have to be slow. With this, you wanna just keep mixing until it's really quite smooth and a lot of that sweetener is dissolved. There's only sort of a little bit of graininess to it. Now at this point, I need to change over to a bigger bowl because I didn't think that through very well. Just make sure you get all that yolk out. Like so. So now, to my egg yolk and sweetener, I'm going to add my nutmeg and just a dash of cinnamon. And again, I'm gonna give that a good mix. And lastly, to this egg yolk bowl, I'm going to add my coconut flour. This is the bit that will really thicken up that yolk. Oh, it smells lovely and sweet and nutmeggy. It's just what I wanted. So as you can see, look, that's already thickening up. And because I'm just gonna sit it at the side for now, it will thicken up even more. So pop that aside. Now in a bigger bowl, I'm going to take the white, pop it in that bowl, and then I'm gonna take my rum and put that in the bowl as well. Now in terms of rum, you don't have to use it if you don't want to. Uh, I've said before on this channel, I don't actually drink, but I'm really trying to emulate this, so I'm using rum, but you could use rum extract or just completely omit it if you don't wanna use it. So to the rum and the egg white, I added just a splash of vanilla extract as well. Now all you wanna do is just give this a good whisk. Doesn't have to be getting white or peaking or anything really, you just wanna make sure you combine those ingredients as much as possible before you add in your other ingredients. So I've whisked mine, not that you can really see, I've whisked mine until they're just starting to bubble up a little bit and the color of the egg whites has sort of changed to that deep browny color with the rum and the vanilla. So now I'm gonna take my egg yolk mixture, which you can see has really stiffened up. And I'm just gonna slap that straight in this bowl with the egg white mixture. The thing with coconut flour is that it thickens over time. So if you use coconut flour and then immediately go on to the next step, you're not going to see the benefits immediately because coconut flour can take up to like 15 minutes in room temperature just to truly thicken. So now that's in there. Again, I'm just gonna give this a really, really good mix. So now I've got this kind of thin batter, which is just what I was hoping for. So I'm really happy about that. And actually it's not that high in liquid as I thought it would be. So that's quite a shock. So last but not least to add to this is your mozzarella. Now some people I've noticed tend to put it on the top and the bottom of their waffle iron and then uh, just work from there and do that. And then put the egg mixture in the middle. So waffle, oh, mozzarella, egg mixture, mozzarella. I don't like doing this personally just because I'm just giving this a really good mix so it's all nice and coated. 
I don't like doing it personally just because I find that it's then too eggy in the middle, too cheesy on the outside, sticks to my waffle iron, all these kind of things. So I'd rather just mix it straight in. And I see no harm in doing that because if you've been here for a while, you know I'm an absolute fat head fanatic. So I'm very used to mixing mozzarella in with my foods rather than putting it on top or below. So now that that's all nice and coated, you're left with this lovely, lovely smelling mixture. And that's all well and good, but here comes the daunting part. I have here my preheated waffle iron, ah, nice and smoky, lovely. And I'm going to use a coconut oil spray just to make sure it can release. Now, it really depends on your waffle iron whether it's non-stick or not. I've heard that the dash ones, you spray it once and then you don't have to spray it ever again. I'm a bit skeptical with my waffle iron because I've tried it with or without and there have been varying results. So for this, I'm just gonna go straight in with a spray off the bat. Not massively heavy, just enough on both irons just to coat it. Then I'm gonna take my mixture and I'm going to pour it across my irons. If you've got a waffle maker that only makes one, make sure that you save half of it so that you can do two chaffles. And surprisingly, that is nowhere near as many ingredients as it looked like. So I'm just gonna mix this around, make sure I get that sort of mozzarella nice and evenly spread like that. Lovely jubbly. Now I'm gonna predict that this is going to take about six minutes, but I will come back and let you know how long it took. And we'll see whether my first attempt at chaffling an eggnog worked. I just, I've got about a minute left and I wish you could smell this. The smell coming off is, it's just, it just smells like someone's making eggnog on the stove. It's stunning. I'm, I'm really looking forward to this. It's, it's got about a minute left and then we'll find out Okay, so it stopped sort of steaming. It's very lightly steaming. It does smell very browned. It has been just a couple of seconds over six minutes and we're gonna see what's happened. So now obviously you can't see this, so I've got my camera here just to slowly release it. Okay, we've got a hole. But we'll just ignore that, that's not there. Let's look at this one. Let's have a look at that. It's nice and browned. It's beautiful colour. I'm hopeful about this. The smell, as I said, is absolutely stunning. So I'm going to get this off. Take a shot just in case it works. And then we'll come back to you for a taste test. Oh, look at it. It looks so good. Ignore that one. Here we have the eggnog chaffle, right? Does it look amazing? I mean, I would say it looks pretty good. It's nice and brown. It's it's nice and crispy looking. It's fluffy. It's got sort of crispy edges and then the middle is fluffy, which is beautiful because that's just what I wanted. It looks, looks okay. It doesn't look amazing, but it looks nice enough. The real question is, does it taste nice? Instead of ruining this beautiful one I have here, I'm going to try one of the sort of bits that fell off the other one and see how that tastes. So here I've got just a little bit of one that just, it just ripped off because it wasn't, it didn't bind properly, which is okay. And we're gonna see if eggnog will chaffle. It's nice. It works. It does work. But mm, the aftertaste is beautiful. But there's something missing here. And I'm going to see if we can amend that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a bowl. I'll be with you in one second. got some cream. I'm going to put just a little bit of cream in, nothing, a little bit more than that. I'd say that's probably about a tablespoon, maybe a little bit more. 
into that cream, I'm going to put a splash of my rum. Like that, again, nothing over dramatic. And I'm personally going to add probably about a tablespoon's worth of powdered sweetener. Uh, you can use granulated powder, just will give you better icing results. That is a lot more than a tablespoon, and we're going to run with it. Just going to give that a mix until it forms a sort of icing. Make sure those clumps have been removed. And you've got this sort of thin icing dipping sauce. Give it a dip in that. Mmm. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. So I'm going to drizzle that on there. Like that. And it's it actually sinks in a little bit. Which is lovely. Eggnog. Will it chaffle? Yes. With that being said, thank you so much, Ginger, for getting me involved in this challenge. I absolutely loved it and I will probably end up doing more. Like this video if you found it interesting, insightful or helpful. Subscribe if you're inclined. And if you have any questions, any comments, any queries, anything, leave them down below. The recipe for this will be in the description. Keep calm. Keep on. Thanks for watching.